Okay, so uh, before we, we go any further, I just want to go back again. We, we will not have much time to discuss uh, CAR uh, to, uh, 2003 in detail, but I just want to make sure that you understand that idea of infrastructural technology and proprietary technology. All companies, and, and if you work for an IT company, all companies dream on turning their proprietary technology technology into everyone else's infrastructural technology right when when a technology becomes infrastructure it means that it, it is not something that people decide I want to have it or not I have to have it it's part of the business uh, and in that sense uh, those who develop proprietary technologies develop proprietary technologies with the intention of hooking others or of, uh, of locking others, locking in others to their uh, technology. Uh, of course, there is, uh, we always have the possibility of using, for example, open systems or open software. Uh, and then we, we may even say that we are not being locked in to anybody's techno technology because it's free and no one has the property of it. But I have to. I, I want you to understand that even when we decide to use free and open technology, we are locking ourselves into that technology. I don't know how many of you use Linux. Uh, on a, I mean, on a general basis, all, all the time, Linux. Okay. Uh, if uh, by any chance at one moment you decide, I, I. I I don't think that Linux is the best alternative any longer. I want to move to, I don't know, some Apple operational system or even to, to Windows. You are locked in in the sense that you, you spent a lot of uh, time uh, gaining expertise in that operational system, which you can only partially convert to another system. So... Uh, I don't know if you understand me, but uh, the, the, the time we put learning something uh, makes us experts in that something uh, and make it more difficult for us to choose something else later on. Because we, if we choose something else, it means that we'll have to learn that something else and that will cost us the time that we need to, to learn that. This is, in fact, even uh, one easy way for you to understand why when we just when we are at your age and we of course you have you have been exposed to some technology um, during your university studies uh, you have chosen to explore a little further some other technologies and you start becoming uh, experts on that but while you're still not an expert on anything you are not imprisoned to, to any of those technologies. After you become an expert on something, you are, at the same time, uh, you, are, you are caught into their network and it's difficult to get out. So we always have to think of this uh, uh, locking in that happens uh, by the use of technology and, and, the, and how difficult that will turn our switching to something different afterwards sometimes it's worth to uh, not to commit um, totally to a specific te technology and to always have some level of understanding of the alternatives so that if you need to push to the other side you can you can do that more easily although when you you know when you when you try to do that you're also losing the opportunity of be becoming the the real specialist on the technology that you that you know, right? So switching costs and, and switching costs are not necessarily money, right? There, there are switching costs that involve time, time, uh, time and knowledge, knowledge costs, that developing uh, the, the understanding of something different need to be thought of. And those guys who, who try to develop technology to become infrastructural to everyone else, they understand uh, this concept of switching costs, they, they make it very uh, as easy as possible for you to opt for their technology 
and they try to make it as difficult as possible for you to opt out of their technology in the future. Uh, when I said that in the late 80s, Microsoft was not the, the main uh, word processor, for, for example. I'm talking about word processor. Microsoft already had DOS, DOS, that was uh, a prevailing operational system, uh, but uh, it was still far from becoming uh, the application's leader for um, word processor, um, what uh, spreadsheets and uh, presentations and things like that. Uh, but Bill Gates, having the, the view of the ego and understanding these ideas of Nicholas Carr, of course, much, many years before Nicholas Carr even expressed them. Uh, in fact, it was Nicholas Carr who understood uh, what, uh, what Bill Gates was doing, right? Uh, he understood the only way I can be successful with Word is if I make it infrastructural to the rest of the world. How could he do that? that? Well, uh, most of the competitors were still attached to the idea that they should be very strict with respect to their, um, their um, how do we call it? their rights, their, their, it's not knowledge rights, it's uh, uh, copyrights. Okay, so many companies Whenever uh, someone tried to, uh, they, they were trying to prevent against piracy, for example, you may think that Microsoft was always a little inefficient in their preventing piracy. The fact is that they were not inefficient; they were very efficient. They they wanted piracy to happen. They didn't want us to think that piracy was cool, right? But they they they, they said, if you want to pay, pay for it. If you don't want to pay, I still prefer that you use my software, that you use the competitor's software. So I will sort of pretend that I'm not seeing it. Uh, for quite some time, I, I had this impression in the, in the early 90s that that was Microsoft's uh, at, uh, attempt you know, to, to dominate the market and to create the infrastructure, the, the Microsoft infrastructure by almost incentivating piracy but I could not say it loud without risking uh, being prosecuted by Microsoft not that they were very interested in what a professor was doing in his class right uh, at that stage well now I'm recording this but at that stage we didn't even record anything so whatever happened here it was among us uh, but I was I remember that being careful about uh, talking about this assumption I had that Microsoft was loose with respect to piracy uh, because of their strategy of becoming infrastructure. I was, I, I was careful because uh, I didn't want them to sue me and, and say that I was telling, uh, you know, I was interpreting wrong what, whatever they were, were, were doing. But then uh, in the 90s, uh, um, um, uh, Bill Gates wrote a book called The... I think it's uh, the road ahead. The road ahead. Well, no. The road ahead. Bill Gates. Oh, how boring! I just wanted to go straight to it, and now it wants me to to check if I am. Does it only? Well, it's in French here, so my French is. I'll just assume that they just want to know I'm a human here, and not that I'm buying his book. I don't. I don't why I want to buy, and I don't think it's worth. <coughs> if I missed it, uh, what happens if I refuse? Oh, so that's it. See, see, this is the book. Let me show here in the recording also. This is the book, uh, The Road Ahead. Um, and in this book, Bill Gates uh, very clearly described a meeting that he had with other members of the strategic uh, team of Microsoft, in which they were all concerned with the way uh, Microsoft products were being pirated in 
in Asia, in, in basically in China. Uh, and Bill Gates said, stop. We don't worry about that. If they pirate our software now, we can charge their kids. Right? We don't have to charge them now. Uh, we can charge their kids or we can charge them later. Uh, so it, it was, it, although it was not official, he even wrote it in a, in, in a book that, that that's the way that they, they went about it, uh, which made me more comfortable saying that this was their strategy. Right? I, I don't like this strategy very much because it, to some extent I, I, I believe it helped turning us all into pirates. Right? There is, I, I assume that there is no one in this room here, including me, that has never pirated something or listened to music without paying the proper copyright or, or everything. And that's the consequence of this uh, policy that was adopted by Microsoft, not only by Microsoft, but by other companies that understood that it was important to develop that, uh, that infrastructural kind of technology for, for other people. And in doing that, many times you had to sacrifice your presence or, or I mean here, uh, uh, not getting paid as much now so that you could develop a more solid uh, position in the future after your, your technology became infrastructural to, to, to more people. Okay? Uh, so uh, I, I, I think that, again, if and when you have time to read uh, Nicholas Carr's um, um, text, Think of it as uh, he he may say he may give us this impression that he's saying that IT doesn't matter any longer. What he's uh, or or doesn't matter at all, not even any longer. He was saying that, uh, but uh, he was first he was reacting to a lot of uh, research in academia, information systems. My my area. We spent the whole night uh, the whole decade of the 1990s. Uh, struggling against what we called at that stage the I, the the the, um, the IT um, productivity paradox. Uh, in fact, there was even a Nobel Prize uh, in economics uh, who claimed, still in the eighties, that he saw computers everywhere except in the. Uh, in the productivity reports of the companies. So he was basically saying whoever spent money on on computers didn't have any return for that investment. That, that, that was the idea that, it's not the idea that prevailed in the 80s and 90s, but that was an idea that whoever was in the IT field had to fight against, because in fact, that was true. Uh, companies were not becoming more uh, at least uh, be richer because of the investments that they made in, in, in technology. And what Carr claims here is that, you know, companies were just buying technology because without technology, there would not be any room for them in the market any longer. So they were not, it's not technology to become more competitive, it's technology to be part of the infrastructure, to, 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 to share infrastructure with others, and then you, you keep as competitive as you were for other reasons, right? So this is basically when he says that focus on using infrastructural technology, he says whatever became infrastructural is cheaper because a lot of people use it, a lot of people um, are able to, to fix it, a lot of people are, are able to provide consultancy on, 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 on those technologies. Um, so that, that those are the reasons why we should use the same as everyone else. And, but at the same time, I don't think that he says, uh, uh, w when he's talking uh, to his audiences at the Harvard Business Review, he's not thinking about the, the IT companies themselves. So, of course, if you work for Microsoft or if you work for Google or if you work for, uh, I don't know, Meta or any of these companies, for them, they are all going to focus on developing proprietary technology because uh, it's proprietary for them and they wish it to become infrastructure for the remaining of the, the market. All right. Uh, 
what I will do uh, now is uh, I will share then the, the link of uh, this second uh, paper here with you. Let me see, in fact, I have it already. Where is Henderson and Henderson and then Katraman? I will share it in our WhatsApp group. And I would advise for those of you who have a big screen, and I think all of you do, right, that we read it on a bigger, bigger screen, not on, 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 on our phones. But uh, I'm going to show you something here. These guys, and then again, changed. These guys, uh, Henderson and Venkatraman, is, is Venkatraman the way I should pronounce his name? Venkatraman. Pardon? The, the link is not loading? It's loading, but we need to log in. To log in. Oh, because, oh, so, I have, yeah, it's, it's see, I, I didn't notice that this link is also inside the Moodle thing, so I'll, I'll give it to you in a different form. Let me see. Um, yeah, well, I, I, I can send it through WhatsApp directly. That's a possibility. Let, but let me see if I, let me see very quickly here if I don't find it on Scholar. Because sometimes, I mean, it's Google Scholar. Let me just grab it from here. Uh, leveraging IT. Business transformation. Is this the third? Strategic alignment, leveraging in IT for. IT for leveraging IT and information technology for transforming organizations. Transforming organizations. Maybe I have to write information technology in there. Yeah, this one, I uh, found it here in Spain. Uh, let's see if it, it's the same version. I think it is. Yep, so I'll send you another link. we will try to do here well for first before we we go anywhere I just want to show you there their model here they have uh, they have the, the this this the, this model here as what they call their model uh, strategic alignment model basically what we have uh, on the, if, if we don't see any axis here, but think that you have an, a, a y axis here and an x axis here. Uh, in this y axis, uh, axis uh, we have uh, the, the, the upper part here is going to be the top management, whoever has the view of the eagle. And the, the part below here is, uh, let's say, the, the ants view of the so so here more uh, th this part the lower part more operational upper part more strategic okay and then uh, when we see uh, here the uh, the, the x axis uh, what we see to the left is the business uh, part of the organization itself and to the right it is the the IT um, organization um, what these guys, it's a pity that it, it presents up there on the screen because if it presented a little lower here, I would be able to do a drawing. But in fact, I will do a drawing here, very here behind. Uh, I'll just do it here. Uh, let's see if we, if that we have these four 
those boxes. So these guys here that are in the, the uh, upper left corner, they are the, let's say, upper management's business focus. So the, th this is the CEO and other strategies. Right? This guy here, let's say it's the upper, the, 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 someone with a, with, a, the, the, with a computer oriented uh, vision here, but also that, ha that, that, see, that has strategic uh, perspective. Maybe the CIO. You're familiar with the, those terms, right? CEO, CIO, Chief Executive Officer, Chief. And these are operational people here, business. And th this is the IT people, right? Uh, okay, what's that? All right, so uh, they, they are going to show us here four different uh, possibilities of strategizing this organization, thinking strategically the organization. The more typical one, and I'll have some of you read about, involve basically this guy here and this guy below. So, so it's a strategy that is thought here at the top by the CEO and it affects the other areas. This area here, the, the CIO is left out. Many times it's because we, you, 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 you may not even have a CIO in the organization. This, this, this is the more traditional uh, view. But for, for now, uh, uh, we'll discuss this further uh, later, but for now, we, I ju just want you to understand it because it will show in the, the paper four different triangles. This is one of them. The other one is uh, this here, this possibility. So it involves, basically, well, it involves the CEO, the CIO, and IT. And then we, I don't have, other, oh, I have green there, so maybe. And I still have another possibility that is something like this. I'm messing this up, but that involves the CEO talking to the CIO and affecting directly the business. And finally, I have one possibility that is the CIO here only talking to the business and to the IT without involving in the CEO. So they're going to discuss here four different possible um, uh, ways of thinking the strategy in the organization, right? And what we will do is, uh, I just, uh, may maybe we could have, uh, uh, maybe you two goes there, uh, get the, the, f the, the first, let's see, the, f the first here, the strategy execution alignment perspective Try to understand the strategy, uh, the strategy execution alignment perspective by reading it. I don't know exactly where it starts. Uh, yeah, it starts uh, probably starts right here. The, uh, perspective one. See perspective one. Strategy execution. So try try uh, you, you read this this strategy execution uh, uh, part of the paper, and then maybe we could have. Uh, uh, you two guys there at the back uh, read the technology transformation alignment perspective. So you have to find exactly where they start talking about strategy two. Perspective two, sorry. Perfect. Uh, it starts here on page 477, here at the bottom. Have you found it? So you two, I, I mean, you, you can read on your own, but uh, I'll, I'll give you some time to... to try and understand what that really means and then we'll, right? And then uh, we could have you two guys uh, talking about perspective uh, three, competitive potential. So, yeah, so first you read about this uh, perspective three, competitive uh, potential, and then we'll discuss. And uh, you two guys here uh, will talk about perspective four, which is, where does it start? Let me see. Perspective four starts at the end of page 479, okay? Just read perspective four. So we have each, each group of, uh, will read uh, one of the perspectives. As soon as you finish, I'll, I'll give you, so I, I don't know how long it will take, but maybe some 15 minutes or so. 
And as, as, as soon as you finish that, we start, uh, we, we can st start discussing it, okay? Oops, give you some, let, let's think 15 minutes. Maybe, maybe we need a little more, maybe you're, we're done with less.